Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham and the subject here is using layers for image presentation. Image presentation is vital when we're showing on-screen images or via a digital projector or when we're preparing images for printing. We can very easily spoil a good image by choosing the wrong presentation style or as in this case the wrong colour. Now the good news is that layers opens up so many opportunities we can be spoilt for choice sometimes. But let's just look at one or two, beginning with placing lines around an image. If you belong to a camera club and you're used to submitting your images into club competitions, at some stage you may have heard a photographic judge make quite a foolish and sweeping statement, in my view, like, I don't approve of lines around images. Now the obvious follow-up question to that statement could be, what, every image, in every scenario, most of them that you haven't even seen yet? Of course, every technique can be the victim of bad judgment. A thick line, as we're seeing here, can take away a great deal of impact from the image because it's not exactly supporting the image as a frame is supposed to do. Here, it's competing with the image. It's the brightest part we can see. To write off every image that has a thin line around the outer edge as being the wrong choice before you've even seen what the author's done is a bit extreme in my view. Take this image as an example. It's a fairly low-key image, although we've got some bright light through the middle. But it's very dark around the edges, particularly the top and bottom. Now, it's not a problem when we're viewing the image as we can see it here, against that mid-grey background of Photoshop. But what if this was being projected in the darkness of a camera club onto a large screen? Then there's a chance that the area outside of the projected image is going to be very dark, if not black. Well, if we move our cursor into the area where mine currently is and right click, we can change this to black, medium grey, light grey, or we can customise the exact colour we want. I'm going to go to black and you can see the problem we may have with an image like this we start to lose where the edge of the image is and of course that can affect how it looks from a composition point of view. So I think the correct thing to do with this image is to create a very thin line around the outer edge, something that supports the image and doesn't compete with it, something that just picks out the boundaries top, bottom, left and right. Now, given that I'm talking about camera clubs, competitions and projected images, I'm just going to go to my image menu and image size. Let's just assume that that's exactly what I'm preparing this for. So in my particular club, I can have the image at its widest at 1920. But you can see here, if I do put 1920 into the width, the height comes out at 1280 and the limit I can go for in height is 1080. So the limiting factor with this particular image, because it's 3 to aspect ratio, is to set the height at 180 and I have to allow the width to remain at 1620 to keep the image in register. Let me click OK to that and then Control 0 to fit this back on screen and for the moment I'll leave my background set to black. I'm going to make a start by going to my layers. I think I'll pop them out on the screen as they've been most of the time. And I'm going to create a new blank layer over the top of my image. And it's this layer where I'm going to put my line. I need to select the outer edge. I'll just hit Control A to select all. What I could do is hide that selection if I want. Control H. Then I'm going to go to Edit, Stroke. I'm going to put one pixel around the inside of my image. 
but as you can see here I'm not going to use white I'm going to start off with quite a dark or you could call it I suppose mid grey now when we see it here we may think we're hardly going to see it at all well let's take a look I'll click OK to that and OK to that and straight away you can quite clearly see that thin line around the outer edge even though it's only one pixel and it's mid grey now the great thing about working in layers of course is we can turn off the layer we've just created we can quickly put another blank layer right at the top of the stack we can hit control A we can go to edit stroke I'm going to leave this with one pixel but I'm going to click the grey panel and I'm going to drop that down quite low I mean we're almost getting towards a charcoal grey I'm going to click OK, OK, Control D and if I drop the size of the image down just a little there you can see the very delicate line we've put around the edge it does hold everything in I think it presents the image well but I don't think you could ever say that it was competing or spoiling the image if we come back to the layers of course one of the other things we can do once we've got these lines on separate layers is compare the two of course I can turn the first one on which is a little brighter but what we can also do is select the layer and remembering that this line is sitting over the top of an image we can make it partially see-through by reducing the opacity and that will have a similar effect to reducing the grey tone there and there you can see the example I've got by bringing the opacity down about 50% what about printing your border onto the image make the border a part of the picture so when you print it you're not only printing the picture you're printing the border that you've designed too then you can edge mount your image onto a piece of card and it's probably the cheapest way to place an image on the wall of our home we don't use any fancy priced frames because they can be quite expensive no glass to clean and because the print didn't cost an arm and a leg then we're quite happy to swap it every now and again when we get tired of the first one now here's a fun picture that I'd like to create a nice frame for now let me just take a quick look at the size of the image to get a feel for the image we're working on so image image size we can see the image is 20 inches almost 21 on the long side long and thin with 240 pixels per inch so we're going to get a print at least 21 inches but if we drop that resolution down we'd still get a good photo quality print much bigger than 21 inches but that's fine for what I want to do here so I need to start by going to my layers and removing the lock remember the lock separates the canvas from the image because it's the canvas I want to increase next I'm going to go back to my image menu and choose canvas size I need to switch to inches here I think because we've got two ways of looking at this panel we can see the overall size but I want to use it in its relative mode which means I can say to Photoshop give me four inches on the width and give me four inches on the height now I've got a number of different options here nine to be precise so if I put my cursor in this box and clicked then on the width I'd get all four inches on the width on the right hand side but leaving this set to the default Photoshop is going to put two inches on the width so two inches left two inches right and the same with the top and bottom of the image if I click OK and hit control zero you'll see just how that pans out the first thing I'd like to do is to make a selection of the transparent area that I've just created the magic wand is going to do that very easily for us so select that and click then I'm going to go back over to the layers because I want to create a new blank layer above the image 
when I create that this one's going to be a shadow so let me just give this a name as I always say names are not important but they help sometimes with that layer selected I'm going to make sure I've got black selected as my foreground color and I'm going to flood that selection with black using alt backspace the selection remains in place so leave it there and I'm going to go back down to the bottom and create another new layer and this one I'll call my frame and in there just for starters I'm going to flood it with white. White is my background colour so control backspace will flood with white and then I can hit control D to remove that selection. What I'd like to do now is to select the shadow layer and I want to give it a degree of Gaussian blur from my filters menu. So up at the top leftish on the screen filters, blur Gaussian blur we're all going to choose something slightly different but straight away with what's come up on screen 20 pixel radius you can see a nice drop shadow has appeared around the edge but of course on darker images you may decide to give it a little bit more than you would if you had a much lighter image so I'll leave it to you to decide how many pixels you feel looks good for the project you're working on a little tip though if you do want to increase the impact of the shadow one way of doing it is to make a copy of this layer control J will do that and if I turn it on and off as you look at the shadow the drop shadow I've created you can see how it's beefed up but if you didn't need two versions you can always use the opacity to drop down the opacity of just one in fact I'm quite happy with one layer so I'll drop that in the bin and we'll proceed from here. Now the border is far too bright for this image I'm going to suggest and we know that if we select the frame and we go to that first lock if I keep my cursor still we'll get the tooltip which says that we can lock the transparent pixels with that lock so when I click it and the lock appears it means that if I flood that shape with color it's not going to flood into the transparent area and cover up the image and the shadow and as I'm turning them back on we can see the drop shadow a bit more effectively there but it looks pretty good with the image too so what I can do now is flood this with color well what color do I want well I could clone a color from within the image if I felt there was something there that was going to work quite well so if I pick up my eyedropper tool let's select a color from this guy on the right you can see the color appear in the color picker there so I can alt backspace and instantly we've got a colored frame and as you know I can click around anywhere and do that a number of times so I can select all sorts of colors here and start to decide if they're helping or hindering coming back down to the background here and picking up that light grey down at the bottom alt backspace you can see we can create a frame here that's in harmony with the image but of course it doesn't end there of course once we've got the tone or colour onto the top layer here the one we've called frame once we can see it in conjunction with the shadow and the image then we can make changes maybe with the levels and or the hue and saturation and just see if we're happy with what we've created so far for example I'll bring my levels up on screen with the shortcut keys of control L now I'll leave this set in the middle so we can actually see the effect on the frame but you can see I can move the sliders here so I can make a judgment on whether I think the grey frame works but maybe it needs to be slightly paler or I'd like it to be slightly darker and as I always say we're all going to choose something slightly different let's say on this occasion we're happy with a slightly darker look and there's something else which I'd like to do to the frame which I 
almost certain I've mentioned before within this set of videos but I would be adding a degree of noise into this I'm going to zoom in on the corner here we can quite clearly see the photographic nature of the image we have but of course this looks rather smooth so while we've got it selected there's a number of things we can do but I'm just going to go straight to my filters I'm going to choose noise add noise two or three percent of Gaussian monochromatic blur uh, Gaussian blur Gaussian noise beg your pardon so let's say three percent here you can see how that balances pretty nicely but of course we're dealing with a frame here so we can push this a little bit higher if we feel it's appropriate let me push it to five for demo purposes control zero now it's looking quite nice what about a line picking out around the edge of the inside of the frame let's put a fine line around the inside edge of our frame with the frame layer selected if we go back to the magic wand and click into the picture of course it's only going to pick up the transparent section of that layer so it selects the inside very easily but I don't want to put any lines on these layers so now's the time to create another layer and we may want to call this line and what we're going to do here is we're going to put a few pixels on this line and we're going to put them on the inside edge so let's go to edit stroke I'm going to use I want to make sure you can see these clearly so I'm going to go a little bit thicker than I might do I'll try five and in the color I'll select white to start click OK there's the location on the inside OK to that and Control D and that doesn't look too bad at all but of course we've just looked at ways in which we can subdue that line either by selecting a mid-tone grey or even a darker grey or reducing the opacity which would work pretty well here I would guess so you could quickly tone it down and just put onto this exactly what you felt was right but of course because we've got the line on a separate layer if I turn these off we may not even be able to see the line I think you may just be able to see it there but of course this works exactly the same as any other layer I can lock that too so once the line is locked I could certainly switch between black and white so with black as my foreground color alt backspace there's the inside of the frame in black control backspace takes us back to white well I think the white is a little overpowering so I would want to drop that down or reduce the opacity but I do quite like the black as well now if you're like me and you're going to take this image down to a commercial printers to have it printed because I'd want my print much bigger than I could possibly print at home in a cost effective way then I would leave this at least overnight and probably a day or two and I would look at it a number of times and make sure I was perfectly happy with the frame that I'm gonna have printed I don't want to get it printed and on the wall and then decide that perhaps I should have done something different I did mention earlier on that we can use the hue and saturation palette to do that I would select my frame which is providing us with the tone and also the texture now and I'll bring my hue and saturation up with shortcut keys they're in the image menu at the top left of the screen but control U will bring them up on screen because I could tick the colorize box and I can pick a color so if I wanted a blue for example I could then select the blue then adjust the saturation so that I've got the steely blue to go with the image and I hope you'll agree that doesn't look unattractive either but of course you can look through 
and see if there's anything else not forgetting you probably will need to drop that saturation wheel down I think it's either going to be something like a very subdued green or a subdued blue with the content of that particular image I'll cancel it at the moment and we'll stay with the mid-tone grey now although I've created a texture on this frame I'm in danger of covering that up with what I'm going to suggest next but for demo purposes let's select the frame again make sure we lock the transparent pixels I'm going to drop the size of this down just a little bit I'm going to select black as my foreground colour going to pick up my gradient tool from the options I'm going to select the linear mode and foreground to transparent and I'm just going to drag down and create a gradient just to demonstrate something slightly different and of course if we're going to do that we may have to reinstate any noise that we've applied to the frame in the introduction I did say there were so many options that we sometimes have difficulty knowing when to stop but here's just one more to finish this if I select my line maybe I'll create a copy of the line if I want to leave the line where it is but I want to create another line let me select that layer hit Control J because what is a possibility is we can change the line using the free transform tool so if I went to edit free transform if I wanted to make that line just a little bit further away in fact I'm probably better off doing this like this so we can see it a bit clearly now this isn't very scientific as you can see because I'm just guessing the width but there's ways we can correct that if we really want to but sometimes if I hit the tick on the options bar here there we have a bit of a decorative line created in just a few seconds and of course we've got the opportunity with that too to kill a little bit of the impact of it by using the opacity so we've got lots of options when it comes to presentation in layers now with the spinning round of the screen you can see I've opened up another image this one is actually camera club size it's been downsized to I think it's 1920 1080 so I've just put a couple of inches on the width and height but what I'm going to do here is to make a copy of this layer control J and a new blank layer at the top but then I'll drag that to the bottom to provide my border or my board that the image is going to sit on and for the moment I will just choose white so control backspace will flood that so I've got two layers here this one is the image of course this one I'm going to make a shadow so once again I need to select that and lock the transparent pixels because what I'm going to do is just flood that shape with black now when I do that Alt backspace you can see what's happened if I turn the top layer off and what I need to do now is to blur that background but I cannot blur it with the lock in place because the blurring is going to spread these pixels and that lock is saying don't spread the pixels so we must remember to remove the lock before we do the next thing and it's exactly the same as we did with the shadow of the other example so filter blur Gaussian blur so you can see here that the same value I used before is possibly a little bit heavy here so you may want to drop it back a little bit but what am I going to give it here probably 20 let's let's live with 20 maybe maybe a bit more 25 but you can quite clearly see that what I've done here is the reverse of the matte effect I did just a moment ago now I've lifted my image from the surface I get the same options around the edge of this image to put fine lines but because this is floating on a transparent background 
we could come at this from the effects down here that's another way so we could use the stroke from there now you can see three pixels on the inside in black just by chance from when I last come into this panel they must be the setting so let's live with those and straight away within a few seconds we've got a nicely block mounted image which would be ready for printing but of course like before we could select the background layer we could select our eyedropper tool we could select a color from the image the green we could select the alt key and click the other color and that'll select the background so I can select both together I could then select my gradient tool and rather than using foreground to transparent I could use foreground to background and I could make a background something like that and yes I know what you're about to say isn't that a little bit over the top yes of course it is well we would adjust that perhaps we could bring up the hue and saturation we could take the colors right down if we wanted to we could brighten it well I think you get the idea but on this particular occasion I think white may be our best option so there is the presentation I could live with